I just wanted to explore sleeping with an African guy, but my husband found out, and now, you guys remember the saying, curiosity killed the cat, right? Yeah. When next you hear the saying or come across, I want you to remember me. You don't understand what I'm saying? Okay, let me try again. I am the cat, but curiosity didn't actually kill me. Curiosity slapped divorce papers in my face. You know, even as I sit here in a motel with my bags and type this, I still can't understand what happened or how it even got to this point. Sure, I shouldn't have been so curious about it, but I couldn't help myself. And now I'm back to where I started, or maybe even worse than when I started. Ladies and gentlemen, have I got the story for you. You know, as bad as it is, I can't help but laugh at how dumb I was. I know you might think that my situation isn't so serious if I can actually laugh at it, but trust me, it is. And I'm only laughing because I don't have any tears left to shed. And again, I was really stupid to think that it would end well. Now I would like you to get comfortable, get under those covers, turn off those lights. Heck, you can even make some popcorn or some Pop-Tarts because you're really gonna need it. Join me as I recount the time I decided to take the saying, curiosity killed the cat, literally, and ended up getting killed. Again, not literally. But before we get to that, let me tell you about myself. My name is Jody Evans, a 45-year-old lady from Utah. I lost my mom at the age of three and it's been my dad and I since then. I wouldn't say I was a troublesome child growing up, but growing up without a mom can be different. My dad did his best to raise a responsible and decent young lady, no matter how clueless he was sometimes. I was an average student in middle school and luckily I got accepted into the University of Utah to study psychology. You know, I'm not proud to say this, but I actually thought I could use psychology to get out of my predicament, but it just made things a whole lot worse. While I was in school, I was a bookworm and rarely hung out with friends, so I never got to experiment or try new things. Sometimes not trying new things can actually be a good thing. After all, there's no rule that said you must try everything. My friends tried everything within their power to get me to leave my dom room and go clubbing with them every other night, but I wasn't one to give in to peer pressure. It's funny because it's peer pressure that got me into this mess in the first place. I stayed in school and completely avoided parties till I graduated, but my friends never gave up on me trying crazy things. For the first two years after I graduated, I lived with a friend of mine and worked my butt off as a therapist, and that was where I met my husband. Now, before you think that I broke the rule that stated that I wasn't allowed to date my clients, Bill, my husband, well, not for long anyway, was not a client. His friend had come to make an appointment with me, and that was where Cupid decided to shoot his arrows. I initially didn't take notice of Bill because I always placed my work first, but when a guy is always sending flowers, gifts, and chocolate to your office, you tend to start noticing. Now, if I only ignored Bill and all his advances, none of this would have happened. I mean, sure, I would be single and probably have a house full of cats, but hey, at least if I did what I did, then probably I wouldn't have any consequences. I probably would be somewhere with my friends talking and laughing about all this, but sadly, that's not the case. Even my so-called friends are nowhere to be seen. It's funny, actually. I mean, after leading me so close enough to the fire that I got burnt, they just abandoned me. Great. Just great. But anyway, back to my ridiculous tale. So like I said, it would have been better for me if I stayed away from Devin and any other guy, but I didn't. Devin had this charm and certain... I don't know how to explain it, but it just drew me to him. And before I knew what was happening, Devin and I were out on a date and I was laughing my butt off. He was hilarious and really knew how to keep a conversation going. We went to different spots for our dates and you know what's funny? Well, didn't go to the usual fancy restaurants and all. Oh no. We went on picnics, we went to amusement parks, Chuck E. Cheese, McDonald's hunted houses, you name it. Now, it wasn't that Devin was a weird or cheapskate, but on our first date, I had told him that I, growing up, I never attended these places. And it took me a while to realize that he was letting me relive that part of my childhood that was missing. That act alone made me fall harder and deeper in love with him. He once asked me if I had written a bucket list. Now, this should have either say no or being honest with him and given him both of them, but I did the most stupid. Well, second most mistake of my life and gave him the bucket list I wrote while I was in high school. Now you might ask yourself why it is such a bad thing. You see, I had two bucket lists, one I made in high school and one I made in college. And I gave him the one I wrote in high school, which had, well, innocent wishes and dreams, but the other one had more, well, mature content. If I had discarded the other one, I would have not been in this situation, but enough of my rambling. Let me continue with my, um, bittersweet experience. After I gave Devin that list, he made it his life's mission to make sure that all my boxes were ticked, and honestly, I loved him dearly for doing that for me. 
We dated for six months before he popped the question and I said yes, obviously. We waited another year before we actually got married. He had some business to attend to and he didn't want any of it to ruin our special day. Ladies, when I tell you that this man gave me the wedding of my dreams, I am not lying. He literally went all out on that day and to be honest, I was convinced we would go broke after the wedding. I mean, this man literally invited a well-known celebrity to perform at my wedding and don't get me started on the vows he wrote. I cried so much that day that my makeup artist literally got tired of fixing my makeup. It truly was a beautiful day and night, if you know what I mean. I still get flashbacks of that night and I always thought nothing could top that, but I was wrong. Oh, I was very wrong. I still don't know what to make of all this because I did not want to do it. I mean, I really didn't want to do it, but then the peer pressure and curiosity just drove me insane. I won't lie, it was an amazing experience, but, but. I was, or rather, I took my look for granted, and soon that luck ran out, and a few weeks later, boom, here I am, telling a bunch of people my story. Lowell. Oh well. Back to the story, I guess. Now, after we got married, we both took some time off from work to enjoy our honeymoon. And when I say sometime, I meant just a week. Devin worked in a construction company and also traded on the side, so money was never really a problem to begin with. He had a 7-5 job, but he never neglected me or even starved me whenever I needed him. Even when he'd come back and look so worn out, he would still ask me about my day and try to make me laugh before retiring to the bed. Now Devin and I had agreed to wait for two years before trying to get pregnant. We both wanted to reach a certain level at our various places of work so that once the baby comes, our jobs won't be affected and neither will our responsibilities to our baby. The first year flew by quickly, and by then Devin had been promoted to a bigger and better position, while I, on the other hand, had been given the highest position at the hospital I worked in, well, highest for my profession at least. Devin and I had this thing we do every Friday which helped us keep the spark in our marriage alive. Not that it needed it, but we just loved doing it. We would both dress up, drive to a bar or restaurant and pretend to just meet each other for the first time. I would take a cab to our place of choice and he would arrive some minutes later in his car. It was always fun and somehow it made everything so much better. We always did this and today was going to be no exception. After I closed work today, I got a text from Devin telling me the bar and time we would be meeting. I get home, put on a LBD little black dress, let my hair fall to my shoulders, and then apply a light makeup before heading out. Now ladies, this right here was when I had actually signed my death certificate, but I had no way of knowing that till everything blew up in my face. I'm not even joking. What should have been a beautiful and romantic night ended up being something much more that that. When I got to the bar, I ordered a martini and waited for Devin to show up. Fifteen minutes go by and I get a text from him telling me that he's stuck in traffic but that he would be with me soon. While looking at my phone, I didn't notice that someone had taken the stool next to mine and was now staring at me. When I finally placed my phone on the table, I saw someone smiling at me. Now it's important to note that the bar was sort of dark and this guy was sitting down so I couldn't tell his features right away but soon I would be able to see him. All of him. Hi there, my name is Lion. What's what's a beautiful girl like you doing alone in a place like this? He partly yelled because of the loud music. Now I'm not a rude person or anything, so I just tell him that I wanted to just cool off and boy talk to anyone while I'm there. He was about to say something, but he got a call and excused himself. Although before he left, he gave me his business card and asked me to get in touch with him. I collected it, first mistake, and told him I would. After he left, I kept the card in my purse, second mistake and said I would tell Devin about it, knowing that he would make jokes about it. Devin finally arrived and we had our little role play before going back home and well, you get the gist. In all this, I had forgotten to tell Devin about Lion and even forgot that I still had his card. I did not know that meeting Lion would be me getting my death certificate, not literally. Collecting his card would be getting a pen to sign it and me throwing it into my bag would mean that I had successfully sealed my fate. If only I knew. I would have torn that card or not even accepted in the first place. Now two weeks had gone since I met Lion and I had completely forgotten about him, but the universe had other plans for me. Not very nice ones, might I add. Things were going, well, not as we hoped it would be. I mean, Devin was now working overtime and well, to be honest, it started affecting our lives. Devin, who was once a ray of sunshine, suddenly became this cold and gloomy person. Okay, how do I make you guys understand me better? Um. Uh... All right, picture this. The orange cat got married to the black cat. j -Syke, I'm the black cat, and Devin is the orange cat. But suddenly, the orange cat turns into an even darker black cat. Devin suddenly became a shadow of his former self, and I began to get worried. 
Now, to be fair, everyone has that one period in their lives when it's as though nothing is going their way and it starts affecting you. Devin was going through that and I could see that, but whenever I bring it up, he changes the topic or just pretends not to hear me. Initially, I didn't let it get to me, but then I noticed that my marriage was at the risk of falling apart before it even started, and this made me feel both terrified and angry. Terrified that I was about to lose my home, but angry that Devin did not want to let me know what was going on. After trying to get through to Devin without success, I decided to let him be and just bury myself in my work. I started taking extra shifts and wouldn't return till late in the evening. When I got home, Devin would be in the sitting room or sometimes sleeping in the bedroom. Cooking was a skill both of us had, so sometimes he would prepare a meal and leave some for me, or I would do the cooking when I got home. We barely talked for more than 30 minutes at home when we could and none of us tried to fix it. I was simply getting fed up and I prayed for something, anything to help me keep my sanity. Be careful what you wish for. I know that saying and sometimes when you start understanding the meaning of certain things, it's already too late. I really wish I could go back to that warm afternoon and change the things I said and did, but sadly I can't. I will never forget the day I let a lion into my petting zoo. I was down to my last patient of the day and to be honest, I was exhausted, but I needed to finish everything today because I had a tight schedule the next day and I really can't afford to fix anything to it. So I asked my assistant to call my last client. When my door opened, a smell hit me. Not in a bad way or anything, but damn. It smelt good like a combination of lavender and roses with a pinch of lilac. I don't know why, but I felt peaceful and light just by inhaling it and it honestly calmed me down. I heard my door close and I looked up to greet my client when I was facing a familiar face. Now I knew that he was fine, but now that I sat opposite him, girl, I can tell you that he is fine. Fine. I mean, that man is so fine and buff that honestly I wanted to just stare at him all day, but I couldn't. He was tall, 6'15 or so, buff, and had this scruffy but chiseled face blue eyes that seemed to just put everything in order. I know, I know. I am a married woman and I shouldn't be talking like this, but I can't help it. He's that fine. I can tell that he didn't recognize me immediately, but when he sat down and looked at me carefully, I swear his eyes lit up like a child on Christmas morning. Daisy, is that you? He asked while smiling. I was confused and asked him what he was talking about because my name was not Daisy. Oh, I know, but I didn't quite get your name the other night, so I called you Daisy in my head. What happened? You didn't call me all this while. Did I do something wrong? He asked me immediately after he explained the Daisy thing. Now I love my husband, but with the way things have been between us these past few days, I started having unclean thoughts about this man in front of me. Did I mention he was African? Nigerian, to be precise, and well, I always heard stories about African men knowing how to treat or rather handle their ladies. I must have zoned out for a long time because it took Femi touching me to bring me back to reality. Are you okay? You zoned out for a second there? He said while still looking at me. Yes, I am. So what do you need help with? I asked after I realized that he must have been in my office because he wanted help with something. Oh yeah. Well, you see, I have this problem and people told me that I needed to see a psychologist about it and you were recommended as the best around here, he said without breaking eye contact. It was as though he was undressing me with his eyes, and to be honest with you guys, I didn't mind it. I asked him to be more specific, and what he told me nearly made me drop my pen. I mean, I can't tell you what it is because he is, or rather was, my patient, and I'm not allowed to discuss such issues with a third party, but I can tell you this. His problem didn't really sound like a problem to me. It sounded like a blessing. Femi became a regular face at my office after that day. He still didn't know that I was married, and that was my fault, actually. I stopped wearing my ring to work because I saw that my male clients were able to open up more to me if they thought I was single. It's, it's stupid, I know, but hey, it works. Femi's problem was not really a complicated one, and if I am being honest with, I enjoyed the company he gave me each time he came. While things were going great in the office, my relationship with Devin kept getting worse with each passing day, and I really didn't know what to do. We barely spoke to each other these days, and the crazy thing is that we were not having any issues. It just looked like we drifted apart and soon it felt like we were just strangers that were obligated to share a house. Now I know what you're thinking. You might be asking why I didn't try to get through to my husband. Why did I let things get so bad between us? And to be honest, I don't know why. Remember I told you about the whole black cat and orange cat behavior. Well, I just couldn't bring myself to talk to him. Not an excuse I know, but that's all I can say. I don't know if Femi figured out I was married or if I had said something that gave away my marital status. But he knew, and unlike most men, that only made him come even closer, 
but he was never inappropriate or flirty in any way. I should have known that all he did was just an act. Femi and I became close friends after some time, and he became that guy best friend I always wanted. He was always there when I needed someone to talk to or wanted to vent out my frustration. And you know what? He was always supportive and understanding. He always encouraged me to be patient with my husband and never get into any kind of argument with Devin no matter what. My relationship with Devin wasn't getting any better, but it wasn't getting worse either. Having Femi in my life was like having a dealer who always gave me my drug when I needed it. And the fact that he never tried to hit on me or encourage me to cheat on my husband just made me yearn for his company even more. You know, I studied psychology and I thought I knew or at least would be able to figure out when someone was playing mind games with me. But when it came to Femi, I was the one being played, but I didn't realize it till it was too late. I still cannot believe that I was so dumb and naive not to see the signs early enough. Like, how could I let myself swallow and believe everything Femi did and said hook, line, and sinker? Like, what the heck? Okay, that's enough ranting. Let's get back to the story. Femi had been my close friend for three months before he finally asked out for a harmless lunch date. I did not think anything about it was wrong, so I accepted his offer. We both went to the park and set up a small picnic blanket where we ate the finger sandwiches he had made. It was really fun being with him, and I actually forgot about Devin and my marriage for some time. You can imagine how heartbroken I was when it was time to go home. Yes, I know, I know, I am a married woman, blah, 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 but come on. My marriage was sucking life from me, and here was a guy who tried his best to make me smile. What was I supposed to do? After our first lunch date, we made it a tradition to always have those lunch dates almost every day for the next three weeks. Again, it was a harmless lunch date, so you can imagine what my reply was when he asked me out to a harmless dinner date. I know that I should have refused and brought up the whole I am a married woman card, but hey, I wanted to laugh, to smile, to feel all giddy inside, something that Devin had stopped doing to me. So I agreed to go on a dinner date with him. Besides, Devin had traveled for a conference, so I didn't have to lie about where I was going. Femi took me to a restaurant where they served African meals and made me try out some of his favorite meals. We had Nigerian jollof rice with a bottle of red wine, and for dessert, he ordered some dried meat that was sprinkled with pepper. I think he called it soya. I can't quite remember, but it was hard, but yummy with so much seasoning. After the meal, he took me to get ice cream, and I felt like a high school girl out on her first date. It was really nice to experience all that with Femi. Did I wish that I had that experience with my husband? Yes. Did I miss Devin? Yes. Did I want to stop spending time with Femi and go back to my boring marriage? Heck no. I wasn't ready or willing to give all this away. I mean, I was finally having the time of my life and I was supposed to just give that all up? No thanks. After that night, my relationship with Femi sort of changed. In a good way. He was no longer one of my patients, but he was sort of like my work husband, although he didn't work in my office. He was also very friendly with others at the hospital and even with the kids. Everyone loved him. If only I knew that it was all a lie. If only I didn't believe that Femi was all I wanted in a man. As the days went by, I noticed that I was slowly getting attached to Femi. Sexually. I would have dreams about being in his arms or tasting his lips. It was just... I don't know how to explain it, but I was infatuated with him. Now I did not plan to act out my thoughts towards him because I was still married to Devin and kind of still loved him. And I did not know if he felt the same way towards me. It was as though I was being drawn to him, and I still cannot explain what happened or how it happened. But all I knew was that I was getting more and more attracted to him with each passing day. One day he came into the office smiling and holding a piece of paper. Two had just seen my last patient for the day and I was terribly exhausted. Look what I found, he said in a childlike manner while waving the piece of paper around. What? I asked without looking at him. Well, I found something that might interest you, he said. I finally looked at him and the pieces of paper in his hands. My heart stopped. Femi was holding my college bucket list, the same bucket list that I didn't give Devin, the same one that caused all that happened in my life. I know I shouldn't blame a piece of paper for my mistakes and poor life choices, but hey, I have to blame something. I stood up and rushed to grab the paper from Femi's hand. I was quick enough, but he had already seen what I wrote and well, the fact that I had ripped it apart did not change anything. Please don't what I wrote seriously. I was in school and bored. I did not know what I was writing back then. I rambled while Femi just stood there looking at me. He didn't say anything until I was done talking. When I finally finished talking, he got up and patted my head while smiling. It's not stupid or silly, dear. Okay, here's the deal. 
I won't bring it up anymore, but you have to let me pick which box would be ticked. He said, this, this should have me enough to tell that Femi had some dark and sinister plans for me, but did I reason like that? Of course not. I had let him use his good boy persons to deceive me, and that's why the decision I took was the worst I had ever taken. Sure, whatever you want, just let it between you and I. I said, still not thinking about it much. It's important to note that I always told my girlfriends about my escapades with Femi, and they always encouraged me to enjoy it while it lasts. He agreed, but he said he would be the one to pick the box to tick, and when it would be ticked, to which I agreed. Mind you, I didn't know what was about to hit me, and I can tell you that I didn't know how hard it would be or how much damage it would cause. The rest of the day went on pretty uneventful, and I soon forgot all about it. That night when I got home, Devin was in the room sitting on the bed looking down at his phone without saying a word. I entered our bedroom and said, hey, but he never said a word, and to be honest, I didn't even feel hurt or anything. After I took my show anks, got into bed when Devin spoke. Did you send money to my parents this month? He asked quietly. Yeah, I did. Any problem? I asked him while looking at him. He shook his head to indicate now and then got up and left the room. I did not know if I should stop him or just ignore him and sleep. I chose the later and we were soon past. Me in the bedroom, him under the couch. You know what, if I'm being honest with you guys, I was already getting tired of my marriage to Devin. I really was getting tired, but I couldn't leave. Not yet, at least. My marriage to Devin wasn't approved by his parents. Not because of me, though. It was because Devin refused to get married the same way his parents and grandparents did. So leaving would have just proved them right. And the fact that we hadn't tried getting pregnant would just be like giving them ammunition. And I would rather die than give them that pleasure of hurting Devin. The next day, I had left the house angry because Devin and I got into a fight about having kids. I wanted to have them, but he kept saying it wasn't time yet. We've been married for three years now. When will the right time come? I angrily left the house and stormed into the office only to be met with a confused Femi. What's wrong? He asked while licking a lollipop. Nothing, I muttered while sitting down on my seat before taking some aspirin out of my drawer and putting some in my mouth. I was in a mood the rest of the day and Femi noticed it so when my lunch break eventually came, he told me to close up early and follow him. Huh? Why? I asked him but I did not get an answer. He repeated those words to me and I agreed to do it. After we left the office, we drove to a 7-Eleven and he had me wait in the car while he went inside. After some time, he came outside with some bags and dropped it in the trunk of his car before getting in the driver's seat. What did you buy? I asked him, but he did not answer me. He simply smiled and started the car before driving out of the 7-Eleven. I could not put my finger on what Femi was planning, but before I could ask him one more time, he drove into a hotel and parked the car. He turned to face me, looked me dead in the eye and said, it's time you take a break. I could not even think of a response or an objection, so I just smiled and followed him out. We got into the hotel and I noticed that he was quite popular with the staff. That should have been my first clue, but hey, I wanted to relax my nerves. After we got our room key, we walked up to our room and he said he wanted to take a quick shower. I told him I was going to do the same after he got out. Guys, I have to be honest with you. When we first got here, I did not have any plan or ulterior motive whatsoever. I simply texted Devin that I would not be coming home that day because I needed to cool off. And luckily it was a weekend. Devin simply replied with a K and I figured he was still upset, but I was not going to let him spoil my mood. I just wanted to relax binge watch some movies and spend time with Femi, but the universe, or rather my thoughts, got the best of me that night and I honestly still regret it, even till this day. When Femi came out of the bathroom wearing nothing but a towel around his waist, I nearly choked on the water I was drinking. I knew he was buff, but Ate never expected to see such chiseled abs in a V-line. Like imagine a Greek god but as an African. Like his skin literally glowed and I swear I wanted to lick it. Creepy I know, but damn that man was fine as F asterisk CK. When he came out, he asked me to go and shower, stating that the water was good and that it would really help me calm down. I got up and was on my way to the restroom when I tripped on my own shoes, clumsy I know. And I don't know why, but the first thing I held onto was Femi's towel. I don't know why I thought it would hold me. I took it down with me and when I looked up, I was speechless. Like, I did not not know that part of the human body could be so beautiful, but it was, it was big, but not like huge. Huge and fat, is that the word? Like, ladies. You know what I mean? Just looking at it, you can tell how it would feel inside you. I don't know how long I was down there, but I got to my senses when he cleared his throat and asked for his towel. 
Being red with embarrassment, I slowly got up and went into the bathroom. All the while I was in the shower, I couldn't stop thinking about it. I really couldn't stop. I just wanted to feel it inside me. Wanted him to just take me there and then, but how could I do that? I was married. Besides, don't think I can even bring it to him, so I just decided to let it go. Yeah, that was not going to happen. When I got out of the bathroom, Femi was now in a bathrobe and was talking to someone on his laptop, but I couldn't see the person. Now this is where I made the greatest mistake of my entire existence. I completely ignored whoever was on that laptop and literally jumped on Femi. Yeah, you heard me, I jumped on him and ignored that tiny voice in my head asking me to stop. Femi actually put up a fight, but when I want something, I don't stop till I get it. When he was finally inside me, he let out a soft and low growl. I'm not even joking. It was at this moment that he held me tightly and showed me what it meant to be with an African man. We went on for what felt like forever till he finally came and collapsed on his side of the bed. It was beyond what I expected and even though I felt guilty, it wasn't because of my marriage. It was because I couldn't do it again. We left the next day and I could tell that Femi did not want to talk to me for some time and I actually didn't blame him. I mean, none of us expected what happened to happen, but hey, it happened. When I got home that day, I expected Devin to still be his moody self, but to my greatest surprise, he was different. I mean, he was his old self. The Devin I fell in love with was back. He had that adorable and infectious smile that he always wore on his face when I saw him in the kitchen. When he saw me, he rushed towards me and hugged me so tight I felt he was going to suffocate me. Before I could ask him what was wrong or what he was doing, he held my hand and got on his knees before saying, Jody, the love of my life, the one who brightens my heart, the woman of my dreams and the source of my laughter. I know that I haven't been the best husband to you these last couple of months and I am sorry. I was just going through a lot at work and instead of telling you about my problems, I decided to keep it to myself till I became a ghost of my former self. Please, my love, I know that it would be hard to forgive me for the pain I have caused you, but I swear on my life that I would spend the rest of my life trying to make things right. He stopped to wipe a tear from his eye, but I didn't even let him say anymore. I pulled him up and hugged him tightly. I didn't even realize how much I loved and missed him till that very moment, and I felt like never letting him go. It, it's, Al, all right. I forgive you and I've really missed you, I said in between tears before breaking down in his arms. We cried ourselves to sleep the next day. Tears of joy, reconciliation and restoration. Now you might be saying, Jody, why not tell Devin about Femi? It's important to be honest with him. It would surely strengthen the marriage. Sure. Sure it would, but I didn't tell him. Heavens no. I mean, why would I? That would only ruin everything, and I didn't want that. I stopped talking to Femi after that. I mean, why bother, right? Devin was back to his normal self, and as much as being with him was legendary, I wasn't about to risk my marriage. Two weeks later, I come home to meet an empty home. I figured that Devin was working late that day, so I decided to freshen up and get dinner started. I walked in our room and saw some mail on our bed. I decided to check it out after having a shower. After my shower, I decided to go through the mail and I saw one that had my name on it. Curious as to what the letter holds, I tore it up and the contents made my blood run cold. I can't even bear to go through it again, but I'll tell you the contents. He wrote, Dear Jody, by the time you read this letter, I should have been long gone. Joe, I truly loved you and I was ready to do anything to make you happy. I know that I grew distant, but I soon realized my mistake and came back to you, but I guess I was too late. Jody, you stood there that night, listened to my apology, and did not think it right to tell me about your adventures with my brother. I am beyond speechless because I never expected you to stoop so low as to sleep with my stepbrother. Are you confused? I am talking about Femi. Yes, Femi and I are related, but you never met him because he had been in Aruba with his family and had just returned to the country. The day he met you at the club, or rather bar, he told me and I expected you to tell me, but when you didn't, I expected that you would have forgotten about him. But then he came to your office and your little friendship began. I was the one who asked him to come to you because I know he would get the best from you, but you still did not tell me about him. I was giving you the benefit of the doubt till you shattered the love I had for you and even spat on my face. You know my brother has a had time controlling his urges, especially when the woman takes him by surprise, but you still did that. How do I know? I was on call with him that night, but I shifted to get a get a pendant I bought for you and show Femi. When I came back, what did I meet? My wife on top of my brother, clearly having the time of her life, but it's all right. So here's how it's going to be now. 
I sent a copy of you wonderful sex tape to both our families and your employers, as well as upload it for the world to see how you truly are. Then I hope you know that Femi has chlamydia, and now you have it as well. You know, I'm actually laughing as I write this because I clearly dodged a bullet. But that, by the way, and to end this letter, I've attached the divorce papers and I've signed on my side. I expect to get it back in the next two days. I wish you all the gifts Hades has to offer. Ciao. Devin. They say once you go black, you can never go back. It's true, you know. I tried black and now I can't go back. Not to Devin. Not to Femi. Not to my work. Not even to my family. Thanks for reading, guys. I'm off to sign my divorce papers. Imagine finding out that your significant other has been tracking your every move for months without you even knowing. I mean, talk about a major breach of trust, right? Yes, I know that I was wrong in every way. And to go outside your marital home or marriage to commit adultery is something serious and unforgivable. I will never forget the wrath that Mario gave me when he discovered my infertility. I'm even ashamed to speak about this, but I have to in order to be able to move forward. <laughs> I've been married for eight years to my childhood and university sweetheart, Mario, male, 32. We started dating during my first year in Washington University, and he was in his second year. I remember the first time he approached me, she was a kind and down-to-earth gentleman, but a bit of a weirdo or a snob. I, on the other hand, was just a bubbly and carefree girl studying research-based higher degree, and he was doing computer studies. And let me tell you what happened. So I, female 28, met this fine, handsome, and sexy-looking man when I was visiting my aunt in Brooklyn for summer holidays. The first time I saw him, I developed a huge crush on him. Well, that time he had just turned 24 and I was 20. I was studying in college in Baruch College in New York City, but after like a year, I moved to Washington University, meaning I was in the same university as Mario. My aunt had always asked me to move in with her since she was staying alone. Her husband was working overseas. After I saw Mario, I then reconsidered my aunt's offer since I was living in a student apartment. So I moved in with my aunt after I found out that Mario and his family were my aunt's neighbors, so I made it my mission to at least be friends with him since I didn't have any. One boring day, I had been scared to ask for friendship with Mario, so I continued staying in the house. On that boring and sunny day, I decided to go and stay outside because the house was too boring for me and I needed some air. So as I was still outside, Mario arrived. Well, he was going with his family. My heart started beating so fast that I even thought it would stop. I then stared at him, or better say drooled on him for a long time. This man was fine. His body structure was to die for, not to mention his voice and smile. God, I wanted to die. Anyway, I think he saw that I was looking at him. Then he approached me after he had offloaded the things they had come with. Since that boring day, we became friends. That time he was to leave for school in three days since he lived in students' residential accommodation. He was a computer geek, which explained why he went to Washington University. I had heard that it was the best in technical studies here in London. Our friendship got stronger each day, as much as I had a huge crush on him but I had closed my crush to a small cage. At least we were friends and we were spending more time together. I was not used to Brooklyn, so he would take me to different places to visit, different ice cream shops. There was this weekend when he came to my aunt's house and asked me to accompany him somewhere. I didn't ask much, so I went with him, only to find out that we were going to Central Park, which was 35 minutes drive away from Brooklyn. <laughs> we dated for a year and a few months, and he proposed to me during summer holidays. I was 19 years old at that time, and he was 22 years old. Our relationship was full of life, love, and happiness. Mario understood my passion in protecting and serving the community, and knowing about the world's crimes and the corruption of each and every country in the world. I can say I'm a professional Navy member, and I knew that my job was to serve and protect, meaning I would travel around the world collecting information about some countries and ask the reason why they were such corrupted leaders. We got married when I turned 20. Well, my parents didn't like Mario for me, but I knew what I wanted, so I chose Mario despite my parents' disapproval. I was just enough that my aunt loved him and accepted him as he was. You know we can't choose for the heart right. It knows what it wants, and it will always make sure to get what it wants. In 2022, everything started changing. I became a person I don't know. I couldn't even recognize myself. I don't know what really made me cheat on my husband, but I did. And instead of making it a once-off thing, I decided to have an affair outside my marriage. I remember when I lied to him about where I was going. That time I had completely forgotten that Mario is a computer geek. He loves playing with his computer, investigating or researching things on dark websites. I had even forgotten that he was not only a computer person but a hacker too, and he always knows where I go and who I am in contact with. 
I had told him that I was visiting my friend Charlotte, but I just didn't know he already had information of where I was exactly going. Lack of emotional connection and support in a marriage can lead you to try to find that connection elsewhere. I loved my husband dearly, but I just felt unappreciated and misunderstood in our marriage. As the years went by, he seemed to give me less and less attention. I started to wonder if I made the right decision marrying him. Every year I thought he was going to change. We were emotionally distant while in the same place. He didn't look at me the same way he usually did. I tried to even change the way I looked, went to the gym and even bought myself some new clothes so he could notice me. I would sometimes ask myself if he didn't find me attractive anymore, or maybe he had found someone else better than me. But why not divorce me or tell me straight in the face that you have lost attraction, or you no longer feel me anymore because stringing a person along while you know that you no longer feel them or love them anymore hurts more than receiving divorce papers or breakups and not getting any explanation for the separation. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Please help me understand why men do this to us but get angry when we do it to them. The things that stand out the most looking back as red flags include, he once trespassed in my friend's male friend house who I was staying with, hiding behind furniture and spying on us to make sure I wasn't sleeping with my friend. I wasn't. He once made a very extensive list of things he didn't like about me. He would keep track of how many times he had suicidal thoughts and he would throw it in my face and blame me for having those thoughts. Not something he did to me. But he told me a story about how he tried to get his kid put up for adoption just to spite his baby mama so she could never see him again. He also kind of always talked down to me and he says he didn't mean it that way and I don't necessarily think he did but he always just kind of made me feel kind of dumb. After a few years I ended up joining the Navy and we got married. After my first deployment, I came back and it's hard to explain, but things just felt off. I didn't feel attracted to him anymore and really felt uncomfortable with any kind of intimacy or him touching me, but I figured I'd get over it and things would go back to normal. Eventually, months and then years went by and I still had that same feeling. I didn't really feel comfortable telling him how I felt because usually when I said something was upsetting me, he wouldn't really care. And plus, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. He would often touch me and it's hard to explain but I would get the same sick feeling in my stomach that I can only compare to the same feeling I had when I had gotten assaulted once in the past. So I would either just clearly act uncomfortable, but he would keep touching me, or sometimes I would say I didn't want to be touched, and he would sometimes continue, but sometimes he would stop. However, we went years without having sex, and we would just kind of act like things were normal even though our marriage was extremely degraded, but I guess we both just didn't want to talk about it. These years were hard, and I felt extremely depressed, but kept it bottled up. I didn't plan on cheating, but since I already felt that my marriage was over, when someone made a move on me, I ended up starting an affair. I felt extremely guilty and admitted it to him after about a month. He said he forgave me. I stopped the affair for a while, but eventually started it up again. And he said he was okay if I kept it going during deployment, if I cut it off when I got back. And I told him if he wanted to sleep with someone else too, that was fine. When I got back, I still wanted a divorce, and I figured since I was trying to get divorced, why not keep the affair going? I kept asking for a divorce, but he kept saying no, that he wanted to stay married. I told him I still wanted to be friends and we could do it amicably. I told him I thought he deserved to be with someone that would be better for him than me. But he refused to sign papers. I felt completely trapped, and I used drugs a few times while on leave and on long weekends because I felt that that was the only thing that could make me feel any happiness. <laughs> while I was still on drugs, I mean, they helped me through the day. Little did I know that the bustard that I was married to was actually taking every moment that I was doing and used it against me. So my affair and I actually met at work. He was more like my partner. His, the person I had an affair with, was Nicholas Brown, male 32. He was just everything that I had needed in a man you know. When I would be with him, I would forget about my shame of a marriage. He gave me peace and that sense of belonging, you know. Well, Nicholas and I met through another friend of mine who was hosting a gathering at his house. So my friend introduced us and, you know, I felt like our energies were colliding even though I was married, but I couldn't care less because my marriage was more like a park where everyone comes and goes at any time. Mario was a control freak. I really don't know where he had got his behavior and the attitude, but it was really annoying. Do you know the pain of being in an unloving marriage, but because the man that you had married has somehow been obsessed with you without any reason? Meaning I was stuck with him since he didn't want to sign the divorce papers. Nicholas was really funny and he knew how to make a person forget their problems. From that moment we met, there was undeniable chemistry between us, you know. He made me forget that I had a very huge and depressing problem in my house. My husband was depressing me to a point that I was sleeping with wine and drugs every night. Nicholas and I talked for hours, 
and I felt more alive than I had ever been in years. Nicholas was attentive and complimentary, showering me with affection. He understood a woman's needs and desires, you know. He made me feel like I was a woman again, and that I was not the problem. It was a lot, and I was drowning. As we were talking and laughing, Nicholas started telling me sweet things that would make any woman melt. But then I remembered that I was actually a married woman. We spoke more about ourselves. I even mentioned the problems I was facing in my marriage. He was kind and understanding, and he listened to me without judgment. He offered me a shoulder to cry on and a sympathetic ear, something that Mario had failed to do. Over time, Nicholas and I became close friends, and I found myself confiding in him more and more. He was always there for me, and he made me feel seen and heard in a way that Mario had not for years. So we started hanging out as friends, of course. As the months passed, my friendship with Nicholas grew stronger, and we started to develop feelings for each other. We began an affair, and I found myself feeling alive and desired for the first time in years. He had that dopamine over me that I was missing, and every moment with him was magical. I respected my husband, or let me say my obsession with my husband, but this newfound excitement and admiration was intoxicating. I knew I shouldn't have done this, but the thrill of being desired by someone new was hard to resist. It felt like I was living in another dimension, you know. It was really refreshing. The way Mario didn't pay attention to me, he didn't even notice what was happening in front of his eyes. I had thought he was going to notice some changes in me or the way I was always out. I mean, I was no longer spending much time in the house, especially during weekends. I was always out with either Nicholas or by myself. That was how ignorant he was after I had managed to convince him to let me do my things and live my life, and I would not go with the divorce settlement, while I knew exactly that I didn't mean any of the words that I had told him. I would always wonder what was happening in his head, but I got tired of being concerned. It was really hurting me that my husband was treating me the way he was treating me. We became more like housemates who share a bedroom and not husband and wife. I needed his time, attention, and affection at first, but he was too busy for that up until I couldn't anymore. I once had thoughts of him cheating on me or performing adultery on our marriage because of the way he was acting. What was hurting the most was that someone else was giving me the attention I had always longed for, the time I needed, and affection, and it was not my husband, can you believe it? My happiness was in the hands of a certain stranger named Nicholas. Nick. That's how I used to call Nicholas to shorten his name. Was giving me an adrenaline rush and he was making me happy. Putting a smile on my face and thinking about him would make me giggle. <laughs> I don't even remember when was the last time I had felt like that. I was sure that even my soul had a dust of sorrows because I was no longer happy with my husband. Nicholas had that effect on me that I couldn't even explain, but it was there. You know, sometimes when my day wasn't a great day, if he didn't call or if I didn't see him at our secret spot, he surely knew what I've been missing. Was I too attached to Nicholas? Well, I think I was. One evening, Nick suggested we sneak away for a romantic getaway together. Mario had not been home for a couple of days. Well, it was more like he would come back from wherever he was very late, and I would be long asleep, then leave very early around six in the morning, and I would still be sleeping. I had never been on a real vacation with my husband, besides on our honeymoon, which was cut short by an emergency that needed him at work and the thought of escaping my mundane life for a weekend with Nicholas was enticing. I had to come up with an excuse to leave the house, so I texted Mario and told him that I was going out with friends for a weekend getaway. Nicholas and booked a room at a hotel in the city, just a few hours away from where I was staying. When we arrived at the hotel, he took my hand and led me to our room. He pulled me close and kissed me passionately. The moment was electric, and I melted into his embrace. I felt really great to feel someone giving you such attention. I couldn't even remember the day I last had an intimate moment with a male person or my husband. He would always come back tired to even touch me. The only thing he managed to do was giving me a perk when he came back from work or going, and that was it. So it was actually a very good feeling and escape for me. Nicholas and I spent the entire weekend exploring the city and getting to know each other better. He showered me with compliments and made me feel like the most desirable woman in the world. It felt so right at that moment like there was nothing wrong. Yep. My weekend with Nicholas was what I had really needed. It was truly therapeutic for me. So as we were exploring the city, Nicholas had suggested that we go to the beach. Since it was hot so the weather allowed, we went to the beach. He then asked me to swim with him. I was a bit hesitant at first, but he begged me and I couldn't resist his begging sexy eyes. So I eventually agreed, so we swam together. As we were swimming together in the ocean, I felt a rush of excitement and guilt. I knew that what I was doing was wrong, but I just couldn't help myself. I was tired of feeling ignored and unappreciated by my husband, 
and this handsome Nicholas guy was making me feel alive again. After the swim, Nick and I went back to the hotel room and spent the night together. It was a passionate and intense encounter, and I felt like I had finally found the attention and affection I had been missing from my husband. He was so gentle with me. He appreciated and complimented my body in a way that I felt like living my true self. He took me to another planet. I was feeling all sorts of tingles and butterflies inside me. As our weekend together came to an end, I knew I had crossed a line. I was falling for Nicholas, and I was falling really hard. It was scary. I felt guilty about what I had done and wondered if I should confess everything to him or not. But confessing was going to ruin a lot of things and destroy my marriage. It was like I was stuck between a rock and a very hard place, and I didn't even know how to get out of the situation. As much as I loved my husband, but sometimes I find myself feeling particularly lonely and unappreciated. So one summer day, it was my husband's, well, Mario's 42nd birthday, so I had decided that I would throw a party for him, not just because he was turning 42, but I wanted him to focus on one thing. That time, Nick Nicholas had gone to visit his family in Washington, D.C., so I had no one who was going to give me any attention, even though he would call to check up on me. So I wanted to make my husband at least pay attention to me and rethink about our marriage because I had that feeling that said it was over because of the way he was never home nor giving me attention. I had invited his friends, family, and associates for his surprise 42nd birthday party. So I was busy preparing for my husband's birthday party. I had planned everything, from all of his favorite foods and decorations. Yes, I was feeling about what I was doing with Nicholas, but I also needed my husband's time and attention so the party was going to give me that even if it was for a day. Yes, I had given up on fighting him to sign the divorce papers and trying to be a better partner. I was somehow anxious and so excited to see the look on his face when he walked into the living room and saw all of his friends, associates, and family gathered there, waiting to celebrate him. Later on, he came back and was pretty much surprised. I was happy to see that surprised look on his face, and it was exactly what I had been hoping for. I saw it on his face that he was happy, even though I was not. The party went well, but I was bored and missing Nicholas. Mario was busy with his friends and associates. He didn't even come to say thank you for the surprise party. I felt so unappreciated and unnoticed. Later on, people left and I went to put on my sexy number, lingerie, to bring back the spark in our marriage. And guess what happened? He came to the bedroom, went to take a shower, then he slept. He even snored. It was really heartbreaking because I was trying to fix my marriage so that I would forget about what I was doing with Nicholas but my husband was not even getting the hints of everything I did or was trying to do. I had hoped that he would at least notice every effort that I was putting on our marriage, but I guess I was in it alone. The following morning, I made sure to wake up early so that I would catch him before he left for work. Luckily, I found him not even dressed. He didn't look like a person who was going to work, so I asked him to give me a moment with him because we needed to talk. I was shocked when he agreed to have the talk with me, because in my mind, I had already told myself that he was going to make an excuse so that he would avoid the talk I wanted to do. So as we were talking, I told him everything that had been hurting me in our marriage and how much he never gave me any attention or affection. He told me lots of excuses, you know, telling me that the reason he was busy was because he was trying to grow his business for our future and that he didn't want his children to suffer when he passed on, so he had to secure their future legacy. I just didn't believe his lame and lousy excuse because we didn't even have children and yet he was talking about our children's future legacy. I mean, how we were even going to make children if he was the kind of person he was. I'm sure that if we had children, they were going to suffer like I was. They were not going to get his attention like I was. So somehow I thank God that he didn't bless us with any children. If he was still the Mario that I had met in my aunt's hometown when he was also visiting his parents, then I would have said that he would be a great father because he was a great boyfriend and life partner at that time. Until he was not. And that happened after we had been married for a year and some months. We talked and he apologized, promising me that he would change and would try to be a better husband. There was progress, right? That day we had spent the day together, watching movies and doing lots of lovemaking during the day. He then told me to get ready because we were going out. Wasn't I the happiest woman? I was over the moon. I had thought that my man was finally back. That day I managed to forget about Nicholas for the day and enjoy the moment with my husband. Later on, we went out to have dinner, and it was really great going out with him. I had missed my husband a lot. Days passed, he was the loving, caring, affectionate, and funny Mario that I had fallen in love with. We made lots and lots of love, mind you, that time Nicholas had been trying to call several times, 
but I had put my phone on silent because I didn't want any disturbance when spending time with my husband after a long time of trying to get his attention. He had also started noticing me, complimenting, giving me his time and attention. The guilt was there because I knew that deep down, if my husband was to find out about my abomination with Nicholas, my efforts would have gone to waste. A lot would be ruined, so I prayed that he does not find out. About two months later, I found out that I was pregnant. I was shocked and somehow happy because it was obvious that the child was my husband's, forgetting that I had slept with Nicholas also about a week before I fixed things with my husband. I told my husband about the pregnancy and he was ecstatic. I had never seen my husband that happy in a very long time, and it made my heart at peace. I had broken things off with Nicholas for the sake of peace, and because I had fixed things with my husband and I didn't want any destruction in the process of fixing my marriage with Mario. As expected, Nicholas was angry. Well, angry was a small definition of how he was. I can say he was furious because after I had broken things off with him, he threw tantrums on me, telling me that I had led him on. Then I was dumping him like a used toilet paper just because my husband had decided to come back to his senses. I first didn't understand his anger because in whatever that we were doing, we had never titled it or officialized any relationship going on between us, even though I had caught feelings for him and I had fallen more than hard for him. I told myself that it was just friends who also help each other in one another's desires. Yes, I had caught some feelings, I won't lie on that, but then it was not feelings of love, but it was feelings of lust, so I didn't really understand his outburst. Maybe I might have let him on, but that didn't give him the authority to call me names just because I had fixed things with my husband. Those were my words trying to make myself feel better. I knew that I would not live for long without missing Nicholas. Was I wrong to do that? Was it unfair? So as months passed, my tummy was growing. My marriage was where I had wanted it to be. My husband was back, showering me with so much love and attention. I enjoyed and loved every moment of it. On the other hand, Nicholas was becoming a bee in the ear. He was threatening me a lot. I tried ignoring him, but he was persistent about exposing our little affair and telling my husband what had been happening behind his back. Another side of me was scared because I didn't understand the sudden obsession he had over me while the other side wanted to just hire a hitman and finish him because he was not just threatening me but also my marriage. I don't know why I had such bad luck when it came to men because I had chosen obsessive men, and it was really frustrating. During those months, I remember it very well. I was going with my husband to do baby shopping. We bumped into Nicholas, and an unexpected thing happened. Nicholas greeted us, then came to me to ask when I would see him. We needed to talk. Imagine him saying that in front of Mario. Nicholas and my husband looked like they had known each other for quite some time, the way they were talking to each other. I was so uncomfortable and prayed that Nicholas does not spill the beans to Mario because if he did, my marriage would be over. Mario introduced Nicholas as his big client. Mind you, I had never met or knew any of his clients. I knew that a lot of people were coming to him or contacting him when they wanted to do those dark stuff, like cracking someone's accounts or finding people, so it came as a shock to me. About a year later, I had already given birth to a very handsome baby boy, but a strange thing happened. The baby looked so much like Nicholas. It was like his clown or his hard photocopy. Even the body features were just like Nicholas. That time, I was pretty sure that the child was Mario's. My husband didn't notice at first because he had always wanted to have a child, but because of his busy schedule, he didn't have time, his words not mine. That time, I had already known that Nicholas was the father of the child, but I couldn't burst my husband's happy bubbles and ruin my marriage because of Nicholas, so I kept everything a secret. Months passed, my husband went back to his old absent self, and he would come home late and go to work very early. I didn't understand what was going on with him because if I asked him, he would be closed off and say it was just work. That really took me back to missing Nicholas, but I would remember that he was Mario's client, so if I were to go back to him, it would be too risky. So it was just me and my son. I felt like my marriage had finally come an end. You know when you have that feeling that notifies you that something is wrong, and it is the end of everything. That was what I felt like. During that month, Nicholas called me and asked for a meetup, of which was what I also wanted because there was a baby involved in our thing. So we met after like five days. I told him about the child, and he just told me that he knew that the child was his, but he couldn't risk getting me in trouble with the lunatic that I had married. I was glad that he understood my situation, and he was willing to take responsibility for his child. There is nothing charming as seeing the baby being present in a baby's life. It's just so awesome, hey? You know, I wasn't really over Nicholas. Well, at least my heart wasn't. Plus, I had missed him a lot ever since Mario had gone back to his old ways. 
That day, Nicholas suggested that we go to a place that was less crowded and in public because the child was still too small to be around people, especially in public places. So we ended up booking an Airbnb not too far from the city. We spent the day talking a lot about us and the baby. It was just so refreshing having to be with someone who doesn't even force things to be with you. Everything was just flowing. It was like we were just meant to be together. Okay, so later on, I had forgotten about my phone and I had switched it off because I was spending time with Nicholas and our child. As we were chilling like that, there was someone who knocked very roughly at the door. When I asked who it was and I gave them the permission to enter the house, I wondered who called the cops because we didn't do anything wrong, only to find out that I was about to be scammed my only child. The police came in with the lady from social services. I got really confused by what was happening. Nicholas came out to check what was going on. They told him that they had got a complaint about a mother who wasn't taking care of the newborn baby because she was on drugs. So they were asked to come and take the child up until the mother gets help for her addiction. I just couldn't believe it, you know. I mean, ever since my affair with Nicholas, I have been sober for months, so I didn't understand what was going on. A few days later, Mario called the police and my commander to report me for using and revealed that he had been working with NCIS for months to build a case against me for using drugs. He had been collecting evidence, including going through my phone and taking secret videos of me. He told me that he had evidence of my adultery, and he had been following me for months. I couldn't believe that he would actually do something so evil to me. I thought he had loved me, but clearly we were both pretending in this marriage. Now I'm getting kicked out of the Navy after just getting promoted, and I was about to re-enlist and get a huge bonus. I won't be able to use the GI Bill, and it'll be hard to find a job. This has also ostracized me from everyone, so I am completely lonely and isolated, while he at least has friends and family for support. I guess it serves me right, but I just keep wondering why he couldn't just divorce me like a normal person, and we could move on. My marriage had been going very badly for years. I cheated on my husband, and he turned me into the police in my job for using drugs. Now I'm stuck in the house. I don't know where to start when I try to fix my life because Mario has ruined me to the core. I had no backup or whatsoever. I don't know how I would survive without my son. Nicholas dumped me after he had discovered that I was using drugs and filed for full custody of the child. My life is just a mess and I don't even know how and where to start fixing it. Please help me, Redditors. I am lost and in need of any advice.